Dois. Uh, don't want to miss one of those, do you? Okay. We're going to talk this morning about walking with God. Walking with God. We're going to talk about a man by the name of Enoch. Enoch. Not much said in the Bible about Enoch. Not much at all. But we're going to read in a moment uh, Genesis chapter 5. We're going to read the first, uh, those three verses I have listed, which is verse 22, 23, and 24. Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. Remember, Methuselah was the oldest person ever recorded to live, 969 years. He lived 300 years after he begot Methuselah, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. We get 365 days a year, don't we? Well, he had a 365 of years. In verse 24, and it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He did not die. God took Enoch. Because... He walked with God. Enoch had a distinction, although not much said about him and throughout the whole Bible. Only three times places is his name mentioned. But he had the distinction of being the one person in all the Bible of which is said that he walked with God. So we need to understand what that term means. Uh, the other two places that he's mentioned other than the one I just read is Hebrews 11 and Jude 14. Let's read Hebrews 11, if you will, in the middle of your page. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. All right, let's drop on down to Jude. The last place that Enoch is mentioned. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him or against God. So we're going to consider three things this morning about Enoch walking with God. The simple question of when he walked with God, where he walked with God, and why he walked with God. So we're going to begin with the first of when that he walked with God uh, on this earth. And we read that it was during the most evil time in the history of man. It didn't take man long to get wicked and grow evil. But the days just prior to the flood where God was going to start over, wipe out civilization, 
and start over. It was during this time that Enoch had walked with God. The days just prior to the flood, a period of gross sin like today, a period of impending judgment, and folks, we've got judgment pending hanging over us if we don't get our eyes straight. Judgment is hanging. <coughs> but again, it was a, a time of much evil. A time of uh, sin was rampant on the earth. A difficult time to maintain fellowship with God because as it was said that during this time that every man's thought was only evil continually. It wasn't just a, a every now and then thing. It was a, a continual thing. And folks, you cut on your news channel and you'll see just some of what's going on. What the news outlets want us to hear. But this week we saw where there was a fort year old boy destroyed his whole family killed five members killed his mother dad and his three siblings can you believe that and yourself no uh -oh, didn't kill himself no but he confessed to killing the others and it, it just it happens on a regular, continual basis. And that's sad. It wasn't the proper thing to do. As Enoch walked with God, it wasn't popular with the rest of the world. They were wicked and they did evil continually. Our Torah Lord told us that the last days would resemble those days. We hear on a regular basis about gun control. Well, gun's not what kills people. I've got about five guns or six that I've had for years and years. And as far as I know, they've never hurt anyone. But it's a wicked heart of men. They have shootouts every day. It's, it's amazing. Stop a guy in a traffic uh, thing that the laws do nowadays, and they get, they pull a gun out and start shooting. That's sad, isn't it? Man, I wouldn't want to be a police officer. You don't know what you're going to stop. No. Point being, Enoch was not with the majority of people. Which tells me the majority is not always right. The majority of the people in Enoch's day abhorred God. They wanted nothing to do with God. We live in a day similar to that. People don't want anything to do with God until it comes time to die. But people are swayed by the majority. But I tell you, the majority can be wrong. And they have been. But don't forget, the Lord told us that the last days would be like the days of Noah and the days of Sodom, that God destroyed Sodom. So it's way back yonder that Enoch walked with God, but he still was able to overcome the powers and the peer pressure that the world offered, and he walked with God anyway. And what I can tell you today the rest of the world may not walk with God, but you can 
if you will. So we're going to go to the second thought of where did Enoch walk with God? Right here on Mother Earth. Earth that was filled with violence. That's what the scripture says. Violence filled the land in those days. So my wife got out yesterday to go to grocery shopping and a few other little stops that she does every Saturday. And I told her you can't leave without your phone and knowing I can get in touch with you. Because as days have passed and, and they, as they continue to pass, especially a woman by themselves out on, on the road, uh, they're easy prey. And it worries me. And it shouldn't be that way. But that's the kind of world we live in. And they tell me you can't treat things like they ought to be. You got to treat them like they are. And folk, uh, people need to arm themselves. We have folk that are breaking into houses on a regular basis. And it's sad. A while back, over in my neighborhood, on Norton Street, which is the next street over from Alcott, where we live, One morning, our neighbor left from his house and went somewhere and he came back and he noticed when he came back home there was a light on that he never cut on. And the doors was open. So he knew right quick somebody must be in there. <coughs> he got his shotgun and went back and opened the closet door and there was a man hid in his closet. He blew him away. You know, the sad part of it is people are on so much stuff today, drugs, alcohol, they may go to the wrong house. And it could be deadly. If you come to my house <laughs> late at night, breaking in, my wife can hear good. I can't. <laughs> you better be careful. I don't want to hurt anybody. But I don't want to get hurt. Does that make sense? All right. But it's the kind of day we live in. That's what I'm trying to point out. We live in an awful time. As I read to you last Sunday, the Lord said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And the ground's still cursed. We live in a decaying and immoral society. I heard the other day on the news that they estimated there were over four million porno channels on the internet. Over four million. You think about that. We all watched that uh, hurricane. We followed it for the last several days. If you had it on your TV and the news, you had to because that was the main thing they had. But how many of you noticed that there in Florida, while that, those waves was raging, it pushed up several bricks of cocaine. 14 miles up, it pushed in a bunch of more bricks of cocaine that someone had, had discarded there in the, in the ocean. But they estimated over four million dollars worth of drugs. Now that's just places that was reported. That's the kind of world we live in, and that's sad.
Enoch separated himself from the world. We have to do this. We come to the last thought of why did Enoch walk with God when the rest of the world wasn't walking with him? Why did Enoch walk with God? I'll tell you why he did. He believed God. He believed what he reported in Jude 14 and 15. We just read a moment ago. It says in verse 14 that he prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. And why is he coming? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. <coughs> And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Enoch was looking for that day. Promised in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned. And God promised them that the seed of the woman... who became Jesus, was going to bruise the head of the seed of the serpent or the man, the Antichrist, even Satan himself. And he not looked for that day. It was a sustaining factor in Enoch's life. That's what caused him to walk with God. And folk, it should be the sustaining thing in our life. Enoch knew that judgment was near. He knew that God must bring judgment. I want to ask a question. If God didn't let it slide in Noah's day, What makes you think he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever? What makes you think he's going to bypass us? It's just going to happen, my friend. This nation has got to get their act together, or our act together, before that judgment comes. Unfortunately, according to what we read in prophecy, judgment's going to come, period. But by faith, Enoch was translated that he didn't see death. He didn't have to die. I thought of here a few months ago, Willie Nelson, <laughs> the singer that makes everybody smile a little bit, it does me, knowing Willie. He used to teach Sunday school, by the way. He did. He read his history. But they asked Willie the other day, and he's on up in his 80s, he, he had a little problem, and uh, somebody said to him, one of the reporters said, well, Willie, we didn't know you were still alive. Yep, yeah, it's me, I'm here. I'm here. Matter of fact, he said, uh, we thought maybe you died. He said, no, 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 I hadn't died. And he said, matter of fact, that, that there's no way around that, is it? He said, if y'all find another way, then call me. He said this, if y'all find another way around it, death, Call me, because I want to know. Folk, here's a, a man that we're reading about that did not die. He was translated that he should not see death. 
means that God gave him a new glorified body without him having to die. Wouldn't that be great? Walk with God, my friend. <laughs> That's what Enoch did, right? By the, by the way, it doesn't say that Enoch was saved. It said he was translated. He was saved because of his faith in our Lord. But I want to consider this, and if you don't take anything else away from this message this morning, but a simple question. If Enoch walked with God, why can't we? Same God, same opportunity. Most of us just don't have the will that Enoch had. We don't want what we don't want God to get in our way. We've got too much to do. At least sometimes we think that way, don't we? But my challenge to you today, you can walk with God. You don't have to. But you can walk with him if it's your choice. You get to choose who controls your life. Be it the Lord or the other guy. And unfortunately, the other guy looks like he's having a prime time, doesn't he? I'm talking about Satan. 